Hello? What do you think you're doing, Kate? I wanted updates. I wanted results. Certainly, Mr. Marson. We all do. Down on the ground, we're doing all we can, but there's no new developments. Kate, I don't think you understand the urgency of this situation. Universal toys are on my back and digging in. I can't hold them off much longer. You're putting the firm in a very tricky situation. I am very sorry, but a slight mishap or two has meant that I've had to modify my mission temporarily. Miss Walker, you're walking on a minefield here. I don't have to underline that this affair is Class A Priority Numero Uno. Hot! I am only too aware of that, Mr. Marson, and believe me, I am doing all I possibly can. But this mission is really no piece of cake. You can have all the cake you want and eat it, too, when you get home. Next time I call you, I want something concrete, something solid. I want results. You want to stand? Results! Yes, Mr. Marson. That is so beautiful. Good morning, sir. Good day to you, ma'am. And welcome to the Hotel Kronsky. I don't expect you to make a reservation, have you? Well, no matter. We've got a few rooms left with the sea view. Uh, well, actually, I wasn't counting on staying in Arrowbad. I see. It's like that, then. Uh, so, what can I do for you? Let me introduce myself. I'm Kate Walker. I'm a lawyer sent by a major American law firm to take care of a delicate inheritance case. Ah, very pleased to meet you, Miss Walker. Felix Matana at your service. I'm the receptionist of this establishment. Between you and me and the brick wall, I often play the role of general manager here, too. Ah, these days the place ain't what it used to be. This hotel is truly incredible, though. It's kind of sumptuous in an old-fashioned way. You should see how sumptuous our suites are. For more than a whole century, they have accommodated some of the world's greats. Would you like to take one? No, it's okay, thank you. I'm not staying. I've got to get away. I'm expected. Right. Well, in that case, I don't see what I can do for you. I want to meet someone who lives here. That's very inconvenient. None of my customers said they were expecting someone. You can't just turn up like that. We've got a very strict policy. In this day and age, the hotel ain't too open to, um, impromptu visits from any Tom, Dick, or Harry. Uh, please. I absolutely must speak with her. It's very important. If it was that important, all you had to do was ring the hotel. Her people come here to rest, you see, to get away from the world, which ain't turning so good these days. Uh, don't let me keep you. Good day to you, ma'am. Honestly, if I could have called, I would have called, but I couldn't. So please, can you bend the rules just a little, sir? Ma'am, in this hotel, we don't bend nothing for no one. With respect. Sir, I really could use your help. I'm sorry, ma'am, but my helping hand only serves my hotel guests. Well, let me just say that by helping me out, you'd also be helping out one of your very own guests. Ma'am, I'm not to be wound around anyone's little finger, you hear? Could you tell me if a certain Hans Vorlberg has ever been here? On a spa holiday? Uh, yes, yes, that's it. I'm sorry, but our hotel register is strictly confidential. Come on, please, it's not like it's a state secret you're telling me here. And if I just let you consult our register, uh, what am I going to get out of it? Uh, my eternal gratitude? That's just what I was expecting. Adieu, as the French say, madame. Could you tell me if a certain Hans Vorlberg has ever been here? On a spa holiday? Uh, yes, yes, that's it. I'm sorry, but our hotel register is strictly confidential. 
Come on, please. It's not like it's a state secret you're telling me here. And if I just let you consult our register, uh, what am I going to get out of it? Uh, my eternal gratitude? That's just what I was expecting. Usually I travel on this fantastic mechanical train. Haven't I seen some kind of a station here? Is it possible to arrive here by train then? Of course it is. What were you suggesting? Uh, if I'm not very much mistaken, that's your air balloon I see getting blown to shreds in the hotel garden. Oh yeah, the airship. That's a bit different. I just borrowed that to make the round-trip journey to Arlbad. Whatever. You better think about getting it off there, and quick. With that contraption on my lawn, some of my clientele might have a relapse. It's a real shame that there aren't any guests at your hotel. We had our moment of glory, but now it's all in the past. That's all. Doesn't it make you sad? Why should it? Once upon a time I met the greatest of the great. Now I got my memories. Sweet memories. Well, thanks anyway. At your service, ma'am. Door's locked, but I've still got to get in there. No! Oh. Sir? I'm sorry to disturb you again, but I've absolutely got to meet Madame Romansky. Don't even think about it. Any way into this hotel is bolted. Why are you telling me that? No reason. Like that, just in case you feel like walking in and rummaging about. The times are changing, ma'am, and we've had to introduce a security system. Keep out unwanted visitors as sure as we keep out the sand and the salt, if you get my drift. Yeah. Of course. Well, thanks again for your warmth and hospitality. Sir? You again? You're beginning to really overstep the mark. I warn you, one more and I'm going to... But what the hell's going on over there? Why is it me gets hell to pay when there's already too much work to do?
I've got to avoid that lousy hotel man and not be spotted. The only way I'm going to get to see Madame Romansky is if he's busy doing something else. Hello there. Good afternoon, miss. Are you the hotel barman? My name is James, miss. James, the automaton nurse. I am not a barman. I'm sorry. I didn't want to upset you. If you don't mind, miss, I would appreciate it if you would just be a little more rigorous in the terms you employ in the future. My name is Kate Walker. Pleased to meet you, miss. You are not here for treatment, are you? No, I'm not. I only want to meet Madame Romansky. I would be delighted to serve you tea when Madame returns from her constitutional. I don't want to impose. Maybe your mistress won't want to take tea with me. Madame likes to complain for the sake of it. Believe me, she loves visits. In that case, thanks for the invitation. I'm looking for Madame Romansky. Do you know where she is? 3.30 to 4.30 p.m. Madame Romansky takes her daily constitutional on the pier. Tea is served at 5 o'clock sharp. Is it possible to go see her? As you wish, but do pay attention to the salt wind. Can you take me to Helena Romansky? Not at this hour, miss. Madame will still be watching the sea at the end of the pier. So? Madam knows perfectly well that during this season I don't go down to the pier. My real work goes dicky under the double corrosive action of the salt and sand winds. Listen, you can hear them sweeping up and down the beach and out to sea. We call it the salt wind here. It'll drive us all crazy one of these days. Come on, just make a little effort. No, I'll stay here and make ready for Madame in case she needs me. She can be so unpredictable, such violent swings of mood. Have you ever heard of a Mr. Vorlberg? The name is not entirely foreign to me. Really? You know Hans Vorlberg? That I cannot say, miss. Madam has forbidden me from talking about him and even mentioning his name. Why? Nostalgia, sadness, medication. Call it what you humans will. We never had this conversation, did we, miss? Madam would be very angry to learn that I know, and now you know as well. Don't worry. Mum's the word. Do you know Comkalsgrad? I left my train there with its engineer. You'll never guess what. It's an automaton, just like you. There's even a family resemblance. Firstly, I would say that I do not know Komkolsgrad. 
Secondly, I have never taken a train. Thirdly, the existence of another automaton with such a degree of finesse as myself appears very unlikely. Madam has always assured me that I am a unique model, a gift from a former admirer. Yeah, but you two really do look alike. And you know, I miss him. Why is he not here with his train, then? I would never allow Madame Romansky to leave on her own. It's a long story, but hopefully I'll see him again soon. Such attachment is very touching, miss. Well, I'm going, James. See you later, maybe. It would be a pleasure to see you again, miss. That door is locked. Darn it! That doesn't work. Just as I thought.
Madame Romansky? Madame Helena Romansky? Who are you? What do you want? I'm sorry to disturb you, ma'am. My name's Kate Walker. I've come on behalf of Frank Malkovich. Ah, oh, Malkovich, the old son of a gun. Are you one of his relatives? Not exactly. He's a good friend of my mother's. He told me you might be here in Arrowbad. I'm American, a lawyer. To what do I owe your visit? You've come so far. It must be important. Indeed it is. I have very delicate and pressing business to attend to. I have just left. Later, my dear, later. I have a slight headache. This hotel mask, they pinch so. I have to go in. Please, could you be so kind as to call my valet? Your valet? Of course. Madame Romansky? So, is James coming or isn't he? Don't tell me you haven't called him yet. Oh, my poor head. Please, ring for my valet. We will continue this conversation inside. Hmm? You back here again? How dare you show your damn face round here? Get out of here immediately! Please, I absolutely must find... Miss Romansky! Oh, yes, I'm sorry. She managed to lie her way in here. Don't matter how vigilant you are, there's always one. Uh, but it won't happen again. She'll be out on her ear before you can say, uh... I hope she hasn't upset you too much. Oh, Felix. Stop being such a grizzly bear. This woman is my guest. She's your guest? But that ain't possible. This scandal didn't even know you three hours ago. Be quiet, Felix, before you offend someone. Miss Rubensky, please. This maniac turned up earlier and tried to wreck the fountain. If it wasn't for the... I said enough, Felix. Please treat Miss Walker with the respect befitting one of my friends. Don't touch and don't swear. Have I made myself clear, Mr. Smetana? Yes, yes, crystal clear, Madam Romansky. Please do accept my humble apologies. Very good, Felix. You may go now. Hello there. Good afternoon, miss. Do you know Madame Romansky well? I have been in Madame's service since my inception. So you must have seen a thing or two. That must have been amazing to take care of such a great lady on all her journeys, be a part of all her recitals. I was but a twinkle in my creator's eye. Madame required my services shortly after her arrival here at the Hotel Kronsky. Well, I'm go it would be a pleasure to see you again.
James? James, where are you? I've rung for you several times. Madame Romanski wants you to bring her back inside. Several times, you say? Are you sure? I didn't hear anything. That's right, several times. Quick, go and get her. This really is most tiresome, miss. If the bell really hasn't rung, then I'm going out for nothing. It's the salt wind. Too much and it'll play havoc with my insides. If you don't mind, I'm going to wait for the bell to ring again. Madame Romanski isn't going to like it. Don't worry, you get used to it. Doesn't look like that works. James, what are you waiting for? Don't tell me you didn't hear the bell this time. The bell did indeed ring, but it is very windy outside, isn't it? Uh, 
Yeah, it is a bit gusty. But what's that got to do with it? Madam doesn't understand. She says an automaton doesn't need protection, but my insides don't like the salty wind. I'm afraid to go out, you know. And if you wore my mask to protect you against the salt, would that help? Oh, most certainly. Have you met her yet? This Helena person? What would she like? Does she remember Frank? Hi, Mom. Yeah, sure. I met her and, yes, yeah, she's living in Arlbad. You can thank Frank for me again. I'll remember too, honey. So, what's Arlbad like? Maybe Frank can take me there one day. It's this seaside resort, Ma, but it isn't what it used to be. You'd be real disappointed. Maybe you're right. So, when are you coming home? Is that mission all over then? Not really, Ma. I still haven't found the air I'm looking for to wrap up the case. Helena Romanski's a kind of detour here. Listen, Munchkin. I get the distinct impression that you're being led up the garden path. Why don't you just come home, tell your boss this air just doesn't exist, that you've done all you can, et voila. Do you want me to call him for you? Ma, please, don't get involved. Looking for Hans Varlberg is what I'm being paid for. But I also just want to find him for myself. Honestly, you're just as stubborn as your father. Don't complain that your mother didn't warn you. Don't worry, I won't. It's a real honor to meet you, Madame Romansky. People have told me so much about you. Mm. People still talk about me. Oh, dear. Of course. Everyone tells me how wonderful you were. How you were one of the greatest singers of the century. Ah, so I was, my dear. But surely you didn't come here just to dig up the past. Like I said, I'm a lawyer, and to tell you the truth, I don't know much about classical music. But after talking to Mr. Borodin and Mr. Malkovich, they really made me want to hear you. Oh, you are too late, my child. Ten years too late. And how is dear Frank? Do tell me. Oh, I am still angry with him for leaving like that to America. Don't be offended, but I never suspected those cowboys actually had an ear for real music. I don't think he sings much anymore. The odd gala, the odd charity event. Anyway, he sends his love. Oh, his love. <laughs> Do you hear that, James? There is someone who still loves me on the other side of the Atlantic. I never said they didn't, madam. What about this other gentleman? What is his name? Borodin? Do I know him? Yes, you once sang in Congo. Recital, if the director's account is anything to go by. If you only knew how moved he still is. He's another one who still adores you. I must confess that seeing one of my greatest admirers once more would do wonders for me, but... Ah, oh, my voice. It is so... Ah, I couldn't. I'm wrapped up in a case at the moment, and because of it, I met a certain Mr. Sergei Borodin, director of the Komkalsgrad Industrial Complex, situated to the northeast of here. Ah, oh, I remember that factory. <gasps> oh, a sad city indeed. <laughs> what am I saying? They all were. Madame Romansky, this Borodin is one of your biggest fans. If you could come and sing for him there, it would make one of his biggest dreams come true. Sing? 
Oh, my poor girl. I have not sung for years. Time has taken its toll. My voice is like the rest of me. Faded and wan, like my heart. Oh, aren't you going a bit far there? I bet you've still got a great voice. Oh, you are the sweetest cherry, my dear. I am not senile yet, but I look reality in the face every time I look in the mirror. And I can tell you, singing is something I did in the past. Strange. I get the impression that Hans Vorlberg turned up here, too. You know Hans Vorlberg? Not exactly. I'm looking for him to sort out this inheritance case. But I've had to snoop around in his past a bit to get on his trail, and I guess he's kind of a close friend now. You knew him, didn't you? Oh, yes. I knew Hans Vorlberg. Do you hear, James? Ah, oh, if you had had the chance to meet Hans, my Hans. Oh my God, what has become of him? Where is he? As questions go, madam, that one is not without certain complications. I'm sorry, but I have no idea. That's the goal of my mission, to find Hans Varlberg. That's why I have to get back to my train as quickly as possible and to get out of Komkalsgrad. And you cannot find him without the train? The train is one of his last inventions. So is Oscar, the automaton engineer. I get the feeling that the two of them are going to lead me to him. Did you hear that, James? I might see Hans again. I have dreamed so long of meeting my dearest sweetheart again. Oh, if only I could sing. If only I were in Paris. I would ask George for that miracle cocktail. The one that only he knew how to make. Wouldn't I, James? Yes, madam. As you have frequently said, without that famous cocktail, your French tour would have probably been cancelled. I don't understand. An extraordinary tale, my dear. It was December, and it was terribly cold and damp. I had to play the role of Tatiana that evening at the opera. But since the morning, I had lost my voice. It drove me completely mad with worry. I don't know how George, the barman at the Moritz Hotel, heard about my affliction, but he brought me up a cocktail that he had invented. A strange concoction. But it turned out to be a miracle cure. My voice returned to me in an instant. That's amazing. That's just what we need. We're going to mix you up a cocktail. Ah, oh, my dear child. It is impossible. George never told me the recipe of the drink. He loved to keep his trade secrets. He said it made him absolutely irreplaceable. <laughs> well, I'm going to get George to tell me. He hasn't yet met with my powers of persuasion. Look, please, you absolutely have to come with me to Kamikalsgrad. It's the only way I'm going to get my train back and be able to carry on my journey. Your train? That's right. I've been traveling on this amazing locomotive with this automaton engineer. He isn't a million light years away from your James. <laughs> Do you hear that, James? An automaton? You have a twin brother? How delightful. And I thought I was the only person alive able to put up with such a peculiar butler. Permit me to express my surprise, madam. Surely the fact that I remain in your service guarantees my uniqueness. Oscar isn't my butler, though. He has a great independence of thought. Sometimes he does whatever suits him. Just like you, James. Isn't that funny? Madam, we'll not be surprised to hear that she is strongly advised not to undertake a journey that, unless I am very much mistaken, will tire her needlessly. James, only one of us will make that decision, and that person is me. I am very curious to meet your automaton, my dear. Where is it? He had to stay with the train in Komkalsgrad. The director used his hands for the final touches on his pianist. 
It's the same pianist that will accompany you when you sing. How quaint. Another automaton. And this one can he even play along with me? Play for me? Ah, oh, why does my voice abandon me so now? You must have had a fantastic life. So exhilarating. Ah, much more than you could ever imagine. I used to sing the finest melodies of the moment in the most fantastic theaters around the world. I have been hailed by kings and courted by princes. Grown men would sink to their knees when they heard the first notes of my recital. My voice could break crystal glass and hearts, many hearts. I'm not surprised. Then one day sickness steals away the gift life has given you. My voice started to betray me. I started to get migraines. My health failed. They sent me here to let the spa town weave its healing spell. I was only going to rest for a month, but then the month became a year and the years get longer. But you look so healthy to me. Oh, thank you, my dear. I'll let you get a bit of rest. Thank you for listening to me. It was a real pleasure, my child. You are a charming young lady, and simply talking to you is a woman to us. Madame Romansky, would it be possible to... Do you have my cocktail? No, not yet, but... No buts, dear! No ifs! If I don't get my cocktail, I won't go with you to Konkosgrad. What are you waiting for? Did you hear that, James? This situation is quite unbearable. I quite agree with you, madam. This young lady clearly is quite incompetent. We really should abandon the whole idea. No, don't say that. This cocktail is important to me as well. Go on, my dear. Show us what you're made of. Hello, Hotel Moritz? No reception here. Can I help you? I'd like to talk to Mr. George. He's a barman at your hotel. I'll connect you with the bar. Just a moment. Hello, Hotel Bar? Hi. I'd like to talk to George, please. George? You mean Mr. George? Uh, yeah. Probably. Uh, he must have been a barman at the Moritz in the 50s. Well, don't want to disappoint you, but Mr. George stopped working here quite a while ago. What was it about? I've been told that Mr. George had a recipe for a fantastic cocktail, and only he knew the ingredients. I absolutely must know what was in it. It's a matter of life and death. I'd love to help you, ma'am, but you see old George? Now, he knew a lot of cocktails. One hell of a barman and one hell of a reputation. He did write down his recipes before he left, but if you can tell me which one you were looking for exactly? Uh, I don't know. There are a lot of them, you say? Yeah. The Paris Peking Shuffle, the Deep Green Secret, Boco Poco, Blue Helena, Red Mambo... Helena! Yeah, that's the one. The Blue Helena. Right, I'll take a look. Blue Helena, you say. Let's see. One measure of vodka, one measure of blue carasso, one measure of honey, a dash of lime and ice cubes. Shake it all together, and Bob's your uncle. Perfect. Thank you very much, sir. You have been most helpful to me.
Hi, it's me again. Uh, could you give me that blue Helena recipe again, please? Why, sure. One measure of vodka, one measure of blue carasso, one measure of honey, a dash of lime and ice cubes, and shake! Got it. Thanks a lot. I'm sorry to disturb you. Yeah, I think I can thrust with my queen through there. Unless... I can see that I'm disturbing you. Uh, hey, no, no, no. Check in two moves. Hmm. Maybe I'll squeeze him with my bishop instead. Nothing like a good squeeze from a bishop. Okay, I wouldn't like to disturb you any longer. Doesn't look like that works. I wonder how that works.
My God. Oh. From what backwater of hell did you find this potion? Are you trying to poison me? It's a... a, a blue Helena. That is impossible. The blue Helena had a color that was like... Um, and an aroma like... Um, you understand? Its texture was not quite so... Um, one thing is for certain. This is no blue Helena. Make an effort, my child. Right. I guess I'll try out another mix. Madame Romansky, would it be possible to... Do you have my cocktail? No, not yet, but... No buts, dear! No ifs! If I don't get my cocktail, I won't go with you to Komkosgrad. What are you waiting for? Did you hear that, James? This situation is quite unbearable. I quite agree with you, madam. This young lady clearly is quite incompetent. We really should abandon the whole idea. No, don't say that. This cocktail is important to me as well. Go on, my dear. Show us what you're made of. My voice. My God, that is atrocious. Horrific. It was too good to be true. George's Blue Helena is powerless. Ineffective on the voice of an old woman. But your voice is perfect. Don't be so down on yourself. You just need to warm up a bit, that's all. After all these years, it's to be expected. No, no, I am very grateful for all your efforts, but really, I cannot go on stage with such a puny, pathetic voice. My performance would be so poor. I would get such bad reviews. You've just got to get your confidence back, hasn't she, James? I must concur, madam. It sounds to me like your voice is fully restored. James, be quiet. You are a sniveling little creep. The Blue Helena really does have a magical effect. Your voice is sensational. I am not convinced. If my voice has really returned, it is not ready. It is still not powerful enough. I tell you you're wrong. The Calm Calls grad director is going to be amazed. My dear, how little you know. I remember a time, madam. When you would test your vocal prowess by breaking crystal tableware and decorations. Ah, those were the days. <laughs> Shards of crystal. I could never do that now. The Blue 
Helena Rip. I am not. I tell you, you're wrong, my dear. I remember. Uh, My voice. My God, what have I done? My voice has returned. Did you hear that, James? My voice, my voice has returned. Your voice is still as magnificent as ever, madam. But please don't forget, you're no spring chicken these days. Time has taken its toll. And you're not the toy boy you once were either, James. I hope you have fun on your own. Madam, leaving you is quite out of the question. Don't be stupid, James. What would you do there? Your place is here. You must prepare my return. Madam, I won't insist. Adventure is not an integral part of my action functionalities. Maybe you're right, madam. As ever. Do I understand correctly that you're going to go with me to Comcallsgrad? You do, my dear. We're going on tour, my dear. Anchors away! I'll go back to the airship to prepare my departure. You can join me there when you're ready. James! Take me to my room. I must prepare. Quick! Quick! What are you waiting for? My fans are waiting for me. Are you sure you're sure about this, madam? Shut up, James, and put your foot on it! Hello? Hi, it's me, Olivia. Hey, sweetie, what's new? How was it at the Goldbergs, then? Like, uh, alcoholic. Is that all? What's up? Cat got your tongue? Well, <laughs> tell me what you're up to. How's the case going? How's that Romansky chick? You don't think it's dragging out too long? I haven't had the time to get bored, I can tell you that, but... Hey, Olivia, what's the matter? You didn't even answer my question, that's so unlike you. Did I tell you I bought this really cool blue silk top? Olivia, what are you hiding? Come on out with it. 
You've got me worried. Oh, Kate, I'm sorry. I've done something horrible. I can't sleep anymore. I, I can't eat. I keep wanting to hurl. Olivia, tell me what's going on. <laughs> Dan! What about Dan? Has something happened to him? I am... We... You're gonna hate me for the rest of your life, and you'd be right in your situation. I... What? After the Goldberg, Dan took me home. We were a bit... You know... We shouldn't have drunk so much. He came up to mine to have a nightcap, and then... Okay, you're gonna hate me. Please hate me. I got it. It's all my fault. I could never tell you that I've had the hots for Dan for ages, because you're my friend and you were engaged and all, but but then we got so close lately and I, I just lost sight of what's right and what's wrong. I, Kate, the guilt is killing me. I want to die. Look, don't bust a gut over it. You and Dan, it's, it's like not real right now. I gotta go, Olivia. I need to process this new bit of data. Are you like some automaton or something? Kate, please! I'm hanging up now. I want to be on my own. Oh,